So continuing on some of the highlights of OVM and UVM. So OVM and UVM are specifically uh, meth the methodologies are defined to enable building constraint random and coverage driven verification. So system verilog language itself supports a lot of features and constructs to, that allow you to build constraint random test benches along with uh, along with features to enable coverage uh, coverage driven verification to ensure the quality and completeness of verification. So the methodology also allows you to build highly configurable and flexible test benches. So the methodology allows you to build configurable test benches which enables you which enables a lot of reuse across projects or across different levels of verification environment. So that is the vertical and horizontal reuse. What I mean by vertical reuse is that components, test bench components that are developed for a specific block level environment can be used for a multi-block or a chip or an SOC level verification environment. As well as components that are used for a specific block could be well used for another block level environment block level verification environment or maybe even components or test bench components that are built for a given project could be horizontally reused for several other multiple projects happening in the company. Uh, so the methodology puts a lot of emphasis on how to build such configurable and flexible test benches with uh, emphasis on reusing them because after all uh, verification is always like bottleneck with time and uh, we would want to reuse a lot of effort that we spend on one project or one verification environment into multiple verification environments. The methodology also puts a lot of emphasis on separating the test or the stimulus part from the actual structural test bench components. So there's a lot of advantages that comes up with this because the test bench components are not tied with your stimulus so that your stimulus could be reused for multiple test benches, maybe for different block level environments or for a chip or a full chip or an SOC kind of environment and probably even the same, same stimulus could also be used for emulation environments. So the methodology supports and puts a lot of emphasis on how you should build stimulus by separating them from the actual test bench structure. Uh, continuing on the highlights, so both of the methodologies OVM and UVM are built on top of transaction level communication or transaction level modeling concepts. So we'll see more about what is meant by transaction level modeling and what are meant by transactions in the uh, following lecture. So but understand like it put the methodology is built on top of this, which gives you a lot of advantages that also we will see in one of the following lectures. Uh, the methodology also allows you to build a lot of layered sequential stimulus. So again, similar to how you build different layered test bench components, you can build base stimulus and then build on top of that uh, multiple layers of stimulus. Again, this has like different advantages where like you are building a complete stimulus for a chip or an SOC using say stimulus components from different block level environments. So again, uh, the methodology uh, allows you to do this and I think we will see more about this as we learn about the stimulus or the sequence part. The methodology also has a standardized messaging format so you can you can have like standardized messaging in your test bench component or in your stimulus uh, which allows you to turn on or turn off the messages. You can categorize the messages as like info message, warning message or error messages or fatal messages and uh, you can also turn on or turn off messaging per component and uh, these are all common between OVM and UVM and uh, in UVM there is a, another register layer that was added newly in OVM with UVM which was not there in OVM. Uh, what it enables at a high level is it enables programming and verifying all the registers in a consistent and efficient manner all the registers that are implemented in a design. Uh, this this register layer of UVM allows you to build a consistent and efficient manner of building a programming model and how to verify each of the register, the different attributes and the read write properties etc. So we will learn about more of this specifically in the register layer section about UVM. So those are some of the highlights of uh, OVM and UVM. Uh, in terms of the differences, as I mentioned, most of the OVM and UVM uh, features remain are uh, at least the concepts are same. Uh, UVM evolved from OVM, and a lot of OVM code could be very well easily converted to UVM by just 
replacing the O with a U. So there are already scripts that are available if you search in the Google or from Accelera, which can be used to convert directly an OVM test bench into an OVM. So that that is because the OVM is nearly backward compatible with OVM. So the OVM is based off on OVM 2.1.1 standard. Uh, though a lot of depreciated features from OVM were removed specifically in UVM. So if you go to the UVM install area, there is a text file, deprecate, deprecated.txt file, and these features will not be available in UVM. Uh, the URM and AVM compatibility layers in uh, OVM was removed from UVM. So note that OVM was compatible with its predecessor methodologies URM and AVM, whereas UVM is not. So those are the only two uh, major differences between UVM and OVM and of course UVM continues to evolve so there's like a lot of updates in UVM. There are certain enhancements to the OVM callback facilities including a different messaging uh, facility. There are enhancements to OVM objection mechanisms. Uh, so these are some things we will learn in the latest sections of the course. But uh, certain certain of these enhancements will introduce some minor backward incompatibilities that were meant like UVM is nearly compatible with OVM. Other than that, uh, as I mentioned, you can blindly change from OVM underscore to UVM underscore for the whole set of library or test bench components if you want to migrate from an OVM to a UVM environment. And definitely UVM continues to evolve. So it started with 1.1 and recently there was a 1.2 standard that got released and I am expecting it will continue to evolve. So that's it in the first lecture which introduces you to OVM and UVM and uh, explains some of the highlights of uh, OVM and UVM. So in the following lectures we will start learning more about the different concepts of OVM and UVM. So thanks and continue to thanks and stay tuned for the further lectures. Thank you.